<laughs> it's been a crazy day of weather here at the homestead today, Jacques. Raining, sunny, humid, hot, raining, back to sunny. <laughs> I don't like it. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I don't like it at all. It is August here at the homestead. That means it's we're in this weird period where it's summer, but it's not summer. And if you don't prep for fall, you're gonna be in trouble. Yeah, fall gardening is all about getting ahead of it. And that means you have to actually start in the summertime. Exactly. So today, it's a little bit of summertime sadness. So I have to admit, I have to tip my metaphorical cap to you, Jacques, because you did destroy me on corn this year. You got a good harvest though. It looks like there's still quite a lot on here. The thing is I didn't though, because like, let's see. just look at the actual harvest itself. This every single one got earwormed out mm. like crazy. Oh, oh, this one's, this That's one's okay. Keeper. That's okay. So what we've been doing is if there are earworms on it, you'll see them right here, obviously. There's the yeah, poop on a, it. That's a great example. You see it's sort of the, how they've destroyed this. Just take a little cleaver, like a butcher's cleaver type thing, and just chop that and you, you can actually use it. We've been eating it like crazy. Absolutely. So what I'll do is I'll just, just throw all this in this pile here and we'll <laughs> save all these shocks. Yeah. Let me go get a harvest basket real quick. Sure. Let's see if this one came out any good. Nah. I this will say like what we've done with them this year is because we didn't have like the full presentation cob, we've uh, sort of sliced them off. Right. And then like sauteed them in a pan, that kind of thing. I mean, honestly, that's a pretty ideal looking uh, ear of corn there. Yeah, that's, you know what? Honestly, some of these lower guys, <laughs> yeah. I'm impressed. They're still fresh, looking real good. Yeah, I am going to shuck them though, because we'll put them in the fridge and we'll probably process them relatively soon. Yeah. So here, toss me that. That's, this is probably the best one I've got yet this year. Last year, we did the amazing maize maize <laughs> and we actually got a lot of corn, but a lot of That's it was true. like dent corn, right? So we made the cornbread and stuff. But you you this year, Jacques, have had a really bumper crop of corn, I feel like, right? Yeah, I've harvested at least 30 fresh eating ears. Yeah. And I've left probably another like 50, 60 on there to actually turn to flower corn because the variety I have happens to be able to do both. That's crazy. The Martian, That's Martian jewel, right? Yeah. But one of my favorite things that I've been doing this year is uh, taking that fresh corn cutting it off the cob yep. and then sauteing it with cherry tomatoes Oh, makes an amazing pasta sauce. Dude. Definitely worth trying. Oh, you do it as a sauce? Oh yeah. Interesting. I put so, a lot of cherry tomatoes, get it saucy. What we've done is we've chopped it all off, so spiced it up, sauteed it, kind of give it that roast. Oh yeah. Uh, sometimes we'll boil it beforehand and roast it after. We've tried the opposite as well. It gives it that nice taste because these, these ones are a little bit gummy. You can yeah. see they're a little stippled here. So the moisture has left the kernel a little bit, mostly because of like some of the pest issues and care issues. So it makes them a little chewier. And then we find that doing that little boil mm. helps. What do you think contributed, Jock, to your bumper crop this year? You just had such a vigorous growth right out of the gate. So what I did differently this year is I direct seeded it. Yeah. Um, I planted it kind of in deep channels and then I watered it extremely heavily. Yeah. Like way, actually way heavier than I intended to because I forgot I turned the sprinkler on overnight. <laughs> How deep Came do you out. think you, you bury them? Um, like an inch? Probably like an actual full inch. Yeah. Like I, I dug a trench and then I mounded it. And not only that, but it, it actually grew really early. Like I feel like I was ahead of a lot of people than what they expected. This one. <sighs> but no fertilizer. Hold on. The chickens need this one. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't be saving this decrepit piece of trash. Butter. Little treat. They'll go wild for that. Come on in, guys. It's been a while. As you can see, this has been hung, hung up for the season, but I'm really excited because the hens really love this. It was so funny the first time that we set this up, we screwed in an ear of corn. We were so excited to see the hens kind of go for it, but they got scared because their pecking causes it to move. And then they got scared of their own movement that they caused. So it's like they couldn't put together the fact that they did it. But I think they've learned now. Rufio, you ready? You ready for it? Let me move out of the way. There we go. There we go. Nicely done. I feel like Rufio's the alpha now. That's like a $3 modification you can do to your coop that your hens will absolutely love. So give it a shot. So perfect world, Jock. We would chop this down a little bit. Yeah because these actually make fantastic green additions the second you harvest them. 
Uh, but we'll probably save that for later because I got a little treat I want to show you in the front yard. Oh. Something okay. a little, little, little special. I'm not mad at that. All right, we'll leave that there for now. Break that down. Oh man, I don't even want to look at these tomatillos. There's too many. <laughs> There's so many tomatillos. There's too many. Before we get to the front yard, I want to introduce you to a new friend of mine, someone I've become acquainted with, Jacques, and you as well. Say hello to Craig Pucci Johnson, the Atlantic giant pumpkin that we're growing here at the homestead. I would say, what do you think, Jacques? I say, I was gonna guess somewhere between 30. To me, that's at least 20, if not like okay. 25 to 30. It's hard because the volume of it, yeah. right? But and here's a scale bar. Here's our scale. So about 10 days ago, it was smaller than this, <laughs> which is absolutely insane. But Jacques, you just finished up some interesting tactics to help it grow. Exactly. You need to basically turn every single function of this plant into an energy absorber and concentrator into Craig Pushy Johnson, the giant pumpkin. So <laughs> what Jacques just did is he buried all of these stems because they can produce roots. I've put down this platform with fine, fine playground sand to provide a little bit of weight distribution so it's not gonna collapse on itself. Obviously it's under a shade cloth. We give it 50 gallons of water a day. We fertilize it every it's day. Crazy. So this is definitely a little out of the norm for the way that the homestead works, but we're going for numbers here. Yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly. We're, we're going for numbers. I'm on, I'm on the downslide myself. I don't know if you've noticed, maybe you have, but I'm on a fitness program right now. I've dropped 11 pounds and it's gained 11 pounds. I think we have some sort of symbiotic, <laughs> you know, sensual, oh. you know, intimate relationship <laughs> where I lose, it gains, I don't understand. But you did pollinate it. I did pollinate it. And my goal here is to actually weigh less than the pumpkin by Halloween. So we'll have to see Jacques. I don't know. What do you think? I'm Kate? excited. I think I think you could pull it off. I think or we, Craig Pucci Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of gourds, there's a few in the, in the front yard, Jacques, that are actually really crazy. This looks new. It is new, in fact. Yeah, my girlfriend bought a orange bougainvillea, which we put there, and the idea is because this chimney is capped, you can't use it. We'll use the same anchors we used on the recent grape trails we built, Jacques, and we'll kind of train it up to sort of take that over. That I've always so liked cool. like the English homes covered in ivy, but maybe not with the ivy because that's pretty, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Ivy in my garden. But take take a look at this. These are the Van Gogh um, fantasy sunflowers. Ooh. Yeah. Exactly. Mine, mine is about that size too, and I'm really excited to see it bloom. I can't wait because that's one of the rarest sunflowers you're ever going to see. Sunflower Steve, who's a friend of Epic he gave us some seeds. Yeah. Uh, the seeds that sold out in like eight seconds, I think, something <laughs> yeah. like that on his store. So this is like what's happening here in the interim of the artichokes because the artichokes, say, like that's not bad. That's, that's actually still- really cool because you cut them back after getting a massive harvest. Yeah, and they're and they've back. they've already come back and you're probably gonna get a fall artichoke harvest. I might get a fall artichoke harvest. Which I'm actually harvest. jealous about. So. Uh, maybe just off that one plant, but we've been trolling and teasing these gourds for a <laughs> while. So let's show you, let's show you the mayhem actually. So have you ever grown these? I have yourself? not. I have not ever grown them. I didn't think they would look as cool as they did. And uh, Joke's on you. <laughs> you've got quite a few birdhouses here. Well, here's a question I have is, I think like perfect world, you would let this plant completely die back before you harvested. But I am a little curious and I don't want to harvest this one because yeah, this is probably too, so too, nice. too nice. But I will clip this one here. I think it's a little young, but that's fine. Yeah, so, I think the stem should be fully like quirked and brown. It should be dry. But it's close. Yeah, it's close enough. But what I was told by someone on Epic Homesteading on Instagram, they were like, well, you can actually eat the birdhouse gourd. But if you can indent it, you can eat it. If you can still indent it severely, I can just damage it. Like, with yeah, my I don't I, think it's still a little bit eatable. It's, it's still a little <laughs> bit too, too young for the birdhouse level. It's also too old for eating. So this is like yeah. perfectly suboptimal, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is kind of one of the weird things about the homestead, I think, this year, is I'm leaving a lot of stuff to sort of dry itself, which means that the garden, like, looks worse. Aesthetically, it does not look yeah, as good. it looks worse, but it's kind of part of the game. And then we planted together, I believe, these gourds over here. Oh, yeah. Which this one, what was the name of it again? I think it's like a Corsican, Corsican? hard gourd or something. Yeah. This one's sick because you can basically cut the top off and, like, make it into a bowl and, like, carve patterns in the side. But you were looking it up and it seems like the wreck is what to leave this for a while yeah you basically want it to be like entire like the main stem should look like this it should yeah. be entirely brown and it's not close hard. to that yet so that means the plant is technically still alive we can see there is a little last I think that one breath. is actually a bonus loofah it or might is that... it might be actually no i don't i can't tell but anyway 
Either way, need a like, little bit of time. Look at this one though. Holy, these are hanging heavy. That's my kind of bowl right these there. These are <laughs> big bowl of pasta. Big that, that old way. bowl. You know what? Pasta, homegrown wheat pasta. In your own homegrown bowl. In my own homegrown bowl. Coming up soon here <laughs> on Epic Homesteading. <laughs> to me, I think I took a lot of inspo from your own garden this year. As you can see, my garden looks a little more like your garden this year than it did in years yeah, prior. Yeah, looks a little more sure. dense. And it's like it's a, way more dense. And then look, look at um. Yeah, as evidenced by the Bermuda grass everywhere. <laughs> but like, look at this. Like, I've got these Thai chilies. I've got shishitos. There's zinnias coming through, right? And then on this other side, more bonkers. One of your best tomatoes? Yeah, one of my best tomatoes, my garage floor tomato here <laughs> that just is completely disease-free, completely pest-free, on the floor, no Falling water. Falling around. Like, it's, it's honestly, I put, put a story up yesterday, I was like, it's so disrespectful because <laughs> no pests, no disease, no water, no fertilizer, no pruning, incredible San Marzano it. tomatoes, and I didn't even plant it. And so sometimes, that's like a page from your book, sometimes yeah. just let it play. Whatever's there, just let it happen. If it's gonna play, let it play. <laughs> and another little note there is this, which I know you don't have. I definitely no. don't have anything uh, close to that size. Look at this. So this one's basically ready, and the way, way you know is... Give it, a, give it a little thumb test. Yeah. Honestly, that sounds good to me. Sounds like a, like, is that a ravine? I mean, it's, it sounds... I think, because you want it to sound kind of like hollowish. A little hollow. Um, it shouldn't like thud and then stop. Yeah. That vibration. Do you bounce, feel that, that bounce, bounce back? back? Dude. That's the a recoil, button. as they call it on TikTok. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, well this is not gonna get harvested today. No. You're gonna have to stay tuned because this little sweet baby, <laughs> I gotta make sure I make something really good with it. What I've been doing since I'm on the fitness plan, pops, fruit Ooh, pops. Watermelon pop? No sugar, watermelon, lime, Greek yogurt, mix it all together, freeze it. Maybe do that with berries as well. That's a real treat. That's a real treat. sounds really good. Because I haven't had sugar in like 36 days. Wow. We're back in the orchard with the most annoying tree we've ever planted. The papaya. The papaya. This thing was just sitting there. I think you referred to it as a troll. Yeah. Because it was just, it wasn't dying. It wasn't growing. It wasn't living. It was just, it was just there. It wasn't living. It was just there. It's like that son who lives in the basement for six years, you know, past, we don't talk post graduation. We don't talk about him. Yeah. But anyway, somebody mentioned that what we should do is cut it down. Yeah. And there was two of them. Yeah, so I decided. Little stem right here. I didn't want to risk cutting both down just in case they were lying to me. Yeah. Uh, but I did cut one of them and it's fully regrowing back now. Yeah. And then I added like 10 gallons of compost mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's alive again. It's think, flowering, there's fruit. Yeah. It's living its and, life. And you can tell all the new growth here. It's, yeah. All of this is new growth after you did that. Totally. And there's some flowers. I mean, it's back. It's back. It might need even more TLC though. Yeah. Why do we have the loppers though? Because this is back, but that's always been back. And that's the peach tree. <laughs> too back. Stone fruit frenzy. Oh, dude, look at... Did you see the palms on this side? The palms are actually fire. Look how big this one is here. Ooh. Oh, leaf-footed bug. I don't like them. Uh-oh, uh-oh, get him out. But then... Uh, There's a couple big juicy boys there. over there. Yeah, so last year I got about three, Jacques. This year it looks like oh, definitely God, leaf more than three. Bug. Wow, that's a big boy. So that's a leaf-footed bug. Yeah, come on in on that. I hate these. Explain why you hate them. This is my least favorite pest in the garden right now. They hatch a bunch of little babies that yeah. crawl around your tomatoes, stab them all, cover them in little tiny yellow dots. Yeah. And they're just like, they're just annoying. It's done. Yeah. yeah. They just make all the, they spread disease and they really, really mess up tomatoes. At least they're big like enough them. to see though. Yeah. You know, it's and the like babies are really dumb because they all congregate on one fruit. Yeah. So I just like. Later. <laughs> Later. All right. We're coming upon the challenge of a lifetime here. The. Ava's Pride Peach. So we've had a complicated relationship <laughs> so with this tall. peach. It's stupid. So this year it fruited hundreds, literally, literally, of peaches after thinning it out. And to the point where we actually almost broke a few branches, which we do not want next year. Now I think we'll have a lighter fruit set this yeah. next year because that's usually how the pattern goes. Nevertheless, it's still in a bad position right now. It's, it's way too tall for like August of the year prior to it fruiting, it, it would throw a couple more feet on top yeah, of this. That's exactly. too tall. Because then you're so, gonna need an actual ladder to harvest. And think about this time of day, at what's not getting light yeah. over here, right? There's and apple I trees in the I shed. simply don't need that many peaches, guys. <laughs> so let's do some troubleshooting here, Jacques. I know someone just cringed. I know one <laughs> of you just cringed watching that, but that's how we do it. Look at what we did last year. 
So this is what we did last year. Oh yeah. Right? And then look what happened as a result. We got this one out, we got this one out. And so I don't think this is that big a deal. I think we could reasonably even take this off, lose all this, take all of this down a little bit more. That's the more, it's pretty extreme, but. I guess in the sense like, again, remembering that as a single person, you don't need 200 peaches. No, no. You'd rather have less high quality peaches or like fewer fruit, higher quality. For sure, because I can't, I simply Because when can't. they try to ripen so many peaches, they also kind of dilute the flavor. Yeah, right? I would agree. That's yeah. definitely a manageable height now. That's definitely, yeah. And if you're doubting, <laughs> just watch last year's video, guys. You'll we see the, the peaches. Thing. So Jacques, it's been a manic season, ups yes. and downs, <laughs> but I think you can tell that the homestead's come a long way and that's what the Epic Homesteading book is all about. Pre-orders are up now, it's out in spring, signed copies plus a pack of botanical interest seeds and a teaser, Jacques, for something that he might not even want to share, but Jacques may or may not be coming out with his own book in, what, a year? Probably at least a year. At least a year. <laughs> so subscribe to his channel too. We'll see you next time, guys. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing. Craig Pucci Johnson.